Hotter Than Health podcast, a plant-dominant podcast for those looking to expand and elevate their lives. Each week, we will bring you provocative conversations and topics, entertaining interviews, and some of the biggest names in health and wellness to answer your burning questions. You will leave each episode with tangible tips and takeaways and understand what it truly means to live an energized and optimized life. Hello, hello. Welcome to this week's episode of Hotter Than Health. I'm Eliza Gelman. I'm sitting in the hotel room and normally I'd pride myself on as soon as I get in, I unpack, everything stays clean the entire time. Even to the extent I I get so clean that my cords are organized my snacks are organized everything that needs to be in the fridge is in the fridge as soon as I take walk into the hotel room my socks are on my shoes are off things are clean but it's a bit chaotic today and let me let me tell you why I spent and then I'm going to stop complaining because that's not productive for anybody but if you some of you guys will feel me on this one Sitting on hold is fine. Normally, I'm fine with sitting on hold because there's a means to an end. I have a question. And when you finally get on the phone, you're so grateful to hear from that person. You're like, oh my gosh, God, I've been waiting on this line for so long. So I called the passport place this morning. I had to get my passport renewed because we have some international travel this year. And they say it takes typically six to nine weeks when you don't expedite. Thought, okay, I've got plenty of time. No worries. It's been 12 weeks. Not a clue. I look at the online portal and it says that it's still being processed. And so I was like, I actually might have a trip coming up and I need to know when this passport is getting here. Also, is there an issue? What's going on? Is it just shipping? I'm not sure. And I get on the phone. The wait time this morning when I tried, I called at 9 a.m. because I know they open at 9. I was on the treadmill. So I called, said the wait time was 25 to 30 minutes. I said, okay. 35 minutes later, I said, oh God, I have a work call. Had to get off. So I, I had to hang up. And I was like, oh, I'll have to do that again later. I get back on that phone two hours later to call and the wait was two and a half hours. And I thought, oh, surely they just say that. Kind of like if you're at a restaurant and you're like, hey, ma'am, uh, we have a party of three. How long is the wait? And they're like, oh, the wait's going to be an hour, hour long. And then it takes five minutes. So I was like, okay, not going to be that long. Three hours later. Okay. I went and got a blowout. I kept one AirPod in. I did all of my work emails. I posted things for Canva for Instagram. I like I did a full workout. And I'm not kidding you. I had a full 30 minute conversation with my sister tracking on and off from the, I I just put her on hold, you know, and I would check back and forth and I would still be having the wait line. All of this to say, when finally someone got on the phone, they said, well, why didn't you expedite it? I said, ma'am, are you shaming me for not spending the extra $60 to expedite when I thought this was not anticipated travel? I didn't know that I was going to need to expedite. What the, anyways, I was uh, absolutely not, if you listen to Heather McMahon, absolutely not to shaming someone for not making that decision when you didn't think you would need to make that decision. Had I known that I was going to have this potential travel, then I would have absolutely expedited. Of course I would have, Janet, but no, I had no idea. Anyway, so that started my morning, but it actually did not change the way I feel. I feel amazing today and I got so much done and I didn't really put much pressure on it. So that's all is to say is that when life puts you on hold, you continue to passively multitask. <laughs> that's all I had to say. The only bummer was that I couldn't listen to my new audiobook. That's actually not that great, but uh, I still want to get it done. Wow. You know what's so funny? And then I'm going to get into the, <laughs> to the nutrition part of this podcast. But if this is your first time listening, uh, this is a very chaotic intro. It's not usually the case. I, I'm not even going to get into hormones. Hormones episode was last week. I'm really not. I, I don't need to be. Uh, telling you guys all about my hormones right now. Let's get into today's episode. (laughs) You're like, well, it's been 45 minutes. So let's, uh, it's been four minutes and 20 seconds. All right. Today, I wanted to talk to you about 
the different types of weight training and different setups for your workouts. I was speaking with someone this afternoon. She was actually, she was doing my hair and she and I are now great, great friends. And I really appreciate all of her input. She said she had been on a weight training journey, really loving it. She goes to a pretty intense gym. Normally when you get into your fitness journey or you just start lifting weights, you're not going to, typically you're going to go to a pretty neutral gym, maybe a YMCA, maybe, maybe a Gold's. Gold's is a bit rugged, but maybe you're going to somewhere that appeals to multiple different audiences. Her gym, it's, I mean, these are, I think it's IBF Pro bodybuilders, there are competitors, there are extreme strength, uh, like Olympic weightlifting. She is going to a gym where the, no, no booty bands are happening. It's all intense training. They go in with a plan and that's how she began her journey. I was like, damn, when I first started, I was just, I mean, I was in college, I was YouTubing things, I was doing Kayla it scenes and then adding my own stuff. And it, it took a long time, but I had to build up to the heavyweights. She just threw herself straight into the middle of the ocean and then learned how she was like, I guess I've got to learn how to swim. So I thought that was really impressive of her. So shout out. Also, don't be scared of the big heavy gyms because those people, uh, trust me, everyone started somewhere. Everyone's, nobody's going to go into a gym and judge you for where you are in your, in your process. And if they do, fuck them. Today, I want to talk to about two different things is HIIT workouts, supersetting, and let's just start there. HIIT workouts are something, it stands for high intensity interval training. And I know a lot of, this might sound pretty rudimentary and pretty elementary, and I understand that. However, this is something that I think a lot of people overdo or they do almost incorrectly to the point where they it's just their default. They're like, yeah, I'm just going to go to a hit class, which is fine to do at some points. And and we're not going to get into, if you want to hear more about when to do certain types of workouts, I've got a ton of podcast episodes on what type of workouts to do at what phase of your cycle, but I'll be referencing, I'll be referencing uh, different phases of your cycle during this episode briefly. But HIIT workouts, high intensity interval training, that is something that is designed to get your heart rate up. It's designed to burn calories, burn fat. They're designed to be incredibly effective, efficient workouts. You think, God, that sounds perfect. Why wouldn't I do that all the time? If you're going to do something like a HIIT workout every day of the week, you, one, aren't getting the recovery that you need, but two, it's not necessarily designed to build a ton of strength. It can be great for endurance. It can definitely help with, with cardiovascular health, but HIIT workouts are, I in it, again, this is going to be based on my history of working out and how I think I've seen it work best also for clients, but I have seen HIIT work best in certain phases of your cycle. So the follicular phase right after your period for about two weeks when you have more energy I have seen it work really well two two to three times per week. When I think it's paired best is when you have hip, hip workouts a few times a week. Let's call it three. During that time of your cycle, you have three hip workouts a week and you're doing things like a lightweight squat to press. So a really quick go down and do a squat, press up overhead. Maybe you're doing... And like five to 10 pounds just to get some type of resistant, extra resistance in there. But maybe you do, instead of counting your reps, maybe you go for a certain period of time and you go based on timers and you're trying to get as many reps in essentially as you can in that period of time. That's, that's one way to do hit. Maybe you're doing jump squats for 20 seconds and a 10 second break. Maybe you're doing 30 seconds of jump lunges. Maybe you're doing 30 seconds of burpees. You're doing 30 seconds of a sprint. Sprint's actually my favorite form of high intensity interval training, but you could do that on a treadmill. You can do sprints on a Stairmaster for 30 seconds. It's again, operative word being interval. Again, you're not going to hear me talking when it, when it's about hit, you're not going to hear me saying, 
that you're grabbing heavy kettlebells, you're grabbing a ton of weight and you're, you're heavy back squatting where you're going low rep. This is more about that high quality or that high intensity, high volume, maybe not high volume, but the high intensity, high heart rate, really get your sweat, really get your blood pumping really quick. Um, I think that those are great two to three times per week. It's going to help to everyone says lean out, but it's really a great, it's a nice little fat burner. It's effective, especially if you only have 20, 30 minutes, you do a hit workout. If it's on that, the good part of your cycle to do it, then the next couple of days you're pairing it with strength training. I do believe that doing two to four days of really high quality strength training per week is incredibly important. And I, and I want to talk about this. Duh, I'm doing a whole episode on it. Do you want to talk about it? Well, of course I want to talk about it. I want to hear myself talk about it. Weight training, let's not get it confused because a lot of people are intimidated by, and and I've been here before too. People will say weight training and I'm like, well, it's weight lifting. I'm like, yes, yes, it's weight, it's weights, but it's also, a, it's just resistance training. You can use a really strong band when you're doing your squats. And if you do your squats slow and right while you're using a band, it's going to be just as challenging as if you're holding a 20, 30 pound kettlebell or a dumbbell. So there's different ways to add resistance, but having resistance training or, or weight training, however you want to call it, is incredibly important for your overall bone density. It's incredibly important for muscular uh, for your muscular structure, your musculoskeletal structure, keeping you in great alignment for just life in general. Um, I was listening to something and it was made it very simple. It said, hey, if your hips, glutes, and spine are strong and malleable and can move and function, then that's, that's longevity. Then you are a, you are at less risk of things like osteoporosis uh, when you're over the age of 65. I believe it's 65. Don't quote me on that. But they say something like, if you're over the age of 65, the chances of mortality after breaking a hip within one year, I don't even want to say it because it was such a high number. It goes up by, okay, we're back and I have the actual study. It says older adult patients with hip fractures are three to four times more likely to die within one year after surgery than the general population. The study aimed to identify independent predictive factors associated with the one year mortality after hip fracture. And it was talking about all patients aged, oh yeah, 65 or older, consecutively admitted in three Italian hospitals with a diagnosis diagnosis of a hip fragility fracture were included. Oh, it said 1,083 patients fulfilled the inclusion criteria in the one year follow up as it reached 728 patients. The 16% of patients died within one year after surgery. Of course, the uh, and, and, end quote. But of course, what I'm saying is not to scare you. It's more just to motivate you to, hey, like, th- this is not something that you want to be on the other side on the backside of. You don't want to be doing this in a reactive way. If you know that you are prone to osteoporosis, uh, low calcium absorption, if you have low vitamin D levels, any of those things, or if you have in the past been uh, susceptible to immune issues, anything that could increase your risk for uh, for risking your longevity, that this is something to consider is if you have the if you have the ability to move your body in the way that would support strengthening your spinal column that would the muscles around your spine uh doing some back workouts some banded workouts some squats to support the hip function and the glutes to support your whole body that's that's why i think that this is so important and i i look at my grandmother i look at you know, my dad, who is, you know, a very lean and youthful, uh, healthy man, but he, he's more of a cardio guy. Like he has a lot of lifestyle fitness and he's just always been a pretty lean guy. And, but I, I do look at him and I think, okay, well, how, how could we 
make this even better. And he's also one of the number one listeners. So maybe, maybe dad, if you, if you're, if you see a kettlebell around or you are cleaning up the boat one day, maybe you do a couple of squats with it. I just want everyone to stay as malleable and versatile in their body as possible. tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, this could not be a more perfect episode to talk about Mosa On Demand. If you are someone like me who likes to walk, you like Pilates, you like HIIT, you like weight training, you like all of the above, and especially if you like mindfulness and recovery, MosaOnDemand.net has got you covered. Mosa is an online fitness community where they have over 400 different workouts. And like I said before, they range from kickboxing. They range from mindfulness and recovery and deep stretching. And most of all, they have different types of timing. So I think it's really important to know that whatever app you're choosing to use for your workouts, if you decide to use a workout app, then It's important to know that they have different varieties of time, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, any of that. So whether you are on the run, you're traveling, or if you really want to deep dive into your workout experience, you can try Mosa On Demand. So podcast listeners get 30 days for free on top of an already 14-day free trial. So after 44 days, a subscription is only $9.99 per month. And they're actually enjoyable. They are options. There are options for weights. If you want to do weights, there's options for body weight. And that is what I love so much about the variety of Mosa On Demand. You can use code hotter than health 30 that is hotter than health 30 for 30 free days again once you are finished with the 30 free days you still get your 14 day free trial which is 44 days of mosa on demand so it's workouts that fit every schedule workouts that fit every body type and wherever you are in your fitness journey so you can try mosa on demand code hotter than health 30 that's mosa on demand dot net dot dot net mosa on demand dot net and give it a try today i know you will love it one thing that i really love about working with organifi is every month i talk to my guy will he's been my guy since the very beginning love him so much and he tells me everything that you all are ordering so i know i know and he has been very clear by letting me know that you all love the green juice the crisp apple and the pure Pure is one of my favorite products. It is something that doesn't get talked about enough, but Pure is a hydration and travel packet, and you can pour it into your water, and it's got things like coconut water, apple cider vinegar, so it's not only hydrating, but it's detoxifying. It's helping to balance your blood sugars while also hydrating. So what I also love about Organifi is their high quality ingredients. You know that I am an ingredient girl and if it had a bunch of BS then I wouldn't be ingesting it on a daily basis. I travel with it. I'm in a hotel right now and I have it in my refrigerator. I use the greens juice every single morning and I have pure in the bottom of my computer bag for the middle of the day. I put it in a large, large jug of water and I mix it up and it actually makes the water enjoyable all day long. So you can check out all of Organifi's incredible products such as the green juice. My favorite is the crisp apple and the pure. And you also know they have the glow, but I won't go on about those. Just make sure you are trying it with the code HTH and you will get 20% off at checkout. Again, that is code HTH at checkout. And you can click on the link in the show notes if that's easier, but I wouldn't be with Organifi for so long if I didn't trust them and love them. That's Organifi.com backslash HTH for 20% off at checkout. Enjoy. Now that is one of the benefits of strength training. So there's the muscular benefit. There's also the mental benefit. So the mental emotional benefit, and this goes for any type of working out movement, boosting your serotonin levels or in your endorphins, the benefit, the mental benefits of challenging yourself in a workout, uh, it's not, it isn't just because of the it isn't just because of the 
your body is physically changing and you're proud of that, there is that sense of pride in, in seeing your hard work pay off. But it is the confidence that comes from setting a goal saying, hey, I, even if this is not my best workout, they're not all going to be, by the way, the majority of them, you're not going to want to go. But it's a numbers game. And all you have to do is know that not every workout is going to be your best, but the more you can get in there and the more that you can commit to yourself and your health and your daily movement, even if it's 15, 20 minutes, that is that commitment to yourself that you keep to yourself and you keep committing to it over and over is how you build confidence, I really believe. I think Ed Milet said it best that confidence is built when you keep the promises to yourself that you make to yourself. And there were so many times, even a couple days ago, I got really terrible sleep and I woke up really late. It was, a, I think it was a Sunday or a Saturday and I could have just gone about my day. I didn't have to go into the gym. I didn't have to go do anything. Nobody was making me. I was at home alone. I was doing whatever I wanted to do. And, you know, it was like 11 o'clock and I was still hanging out. I ate breakfast. I was doing all the things that I wouldn't typically do before a workout. And then I said to myself, why not? It doesn't have to be an intense workout. I was like, I can go for a walk. But then I thought, no, it's raining outside. So I just went to the gym and I planned on doing a 20 minute walk. And then I was going to either sauna or do whatever else I do at the gym. But by the time I got there, I walked for five minutes on an incline. And then I said, okay, I, I have a little bit of energy. Let's just go do two rounds of squats. And I didn't use anything heavy. I used a couple 20 pound dumbbells. I did some walking lunges and then I did some, some squats. And then after that, I was like, huh, okay, let me just do one more round. And then I did one more round. So even though, then I, then I was done, then I went and sauna and it felt great. But what I'm saying is that if I had I not given myself that opportunity to get in there and motivate myself, then that's, it's one more workout that I got. And again, this, this messaging is not for weight loss. This messaging is not for wanting to change who anyone is, but the mental benefits that you get from committing to yourself and, and, and really performing actions that will increase your longevity, your confidence and your happiness. And, and for me, that's weight training for you. It might be Pilates and and resistance training, but I do encourage even, I love Pilates. I love yoga. I love stretching. I love walking so much. The benefits of weight training, resistance training, are by and large some of the most vital for our overall health. And if anyone says that one, like only doing Pilates, only doing yoga, only walking low impact, if someone says that by doing only one thing for the rest of your life, you're going to be the healthiest you can be, I, I would like to sit down and have dinner with that person because our bodies change. Our requirements change. Our mental states change. Also, it's, we, what if what if we lose our jobs and we can't afford to go to a Pilates studio? What are you going to do then? What if you have to go get a $25 Gold's membership? What if one day you realize, oh, well, I've only ever done workout classes. I don't know what to do on my own. What do I do? I'm out of town, so I don't have my workout gym with me. You're just never going to work out unless it's in that exact one confined space. That's so limiting. I believe that really arming yourself with the education of, okay, here's the, here's the way I want to feel. So here's the workout that I'm going to do. Doesn't have to be incredibly heavy, but it does have to, it has to challenge you. Like it doesn't have to completely push you to your edge, but knowing that it's not something you would do in bed <laughs> or at home is going to be one of the greatest, greatest ways to uh, increase your longevity. Now, I want to also talk about supersetting. Supersetting is such a fun, I'm <laughs> nerd. Supersetting is my favorite way to work out. And there are going to be some power lifters, strength training professionals. There's going to be some personal trainers out there who think that that's not the best way to work out. And guess what? That is fine. There are also people out there who, there are also people out there who claim that only eating beef liver and cow testicles is the way to go. That is fine. I love that for you and that uh, keep going. I'm I'm here. <laughs> so let's chat. I'm not here to judge you. No need to judge me. This is what works for me. I don't superset all the time, but let me quickly define supersetting. Supersetting is pairing two moves together that are 
complementary to one another during your workout that you do in a uh, back-to-back rotation. So for example, one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite supersets is doing a hip thrust, which is so fantastic for your glutes, your hips, your core, your the muscles around your spine if you're doing it properly. And I love to do a heavy barbell or or just pop a kettlebell or a dumbbell on a on a pad and put it on my stomach and do hip thrusts on a bench there. It doesn't have to be crazy heavy. You just go a little higher weight or you put a band around your knees, make it a little heavier. I love doing 10 to 12 of those really, really engaging, giving it, you know, 20, 30 seconds afterwards, let the blood kind of flow back into my extremities. And then I stand up and I do 10 to 12 Bulgarian split squats on each side. And if you're thinking, what the hell is that? It's just, you're, you're facing away from a bench you put your foot, the, the top of your foot on the bench, and you go down and do a single leg kneeling squat. You can also Google it. It's a Bulgarian split squat, or you could do a reverse lunge, uh, something similar. But I love Bulgarian split squats because they are so challenging. I typically don't go as heavy with them because I'm a little bitch, but I go heavy with a hip thrust. And sometimes I'll go heavier with a Bulgarian split squat if I'm feeling uh, like I have a good playlist and I'm in that mindset and I'm feeling motivated by people around me. But I love doing three or four rounds of that. That's one of my favorite supersets. So essentially doing two different moves in conjunction with one another. So those are two moves that really you're opening your hips a lot, but you're also getting that nice hinge movement. I think it's really fantastic. Those are some of my faves. And then for upper body, if you're doing chest press and then you're supersetting it with a, uh, tricep extension or even a tricep push-up, you know? So you're, you're working your triceps, your chest is going to, we could really go on about like different muscle groups, but when you're doing chest, you're also using your triceps to support that muscle. So the tricep is kind of an accessory muscle to the chest. So if you do plan on doing a superset with chest and tricep, just know the next round of chest, if your triceps are shot, it's going to that way it's going to feel a lot heavier when you do your chest press. And just trust me on that. My, f- I was talking to my, my girl this morning who was doing my hair at Modern Salon in Charlotte. Thank you so much. Um, hair lo- still looks great, by the way. It's only been three hours, but it's still kicking. One of my favorite ways to train is back. I used to not really put too much emphasis on back because I thought, oh, well, I'm still getting back workouts with my push-ups and my deadlifts and my sprints. And, you know, it was kind of just, I would do arms, not a full focused back, but doing, working out and, and doing uh, resistance training specific for back muscles has been one of the most mo- body changing and posture crafting uh workouts or (laughs) tools, excuse me, has been one of the best body crafting tools. And if you are someone here, hear me out, truly, this is going to be important. So turn the shit up, especially if you are listening with with your significant other, you're listening with your children. And I'm telling you, if you are, if you own a cell phone, listen to this. Our natural stance has gone from anatomically standing upright and straight, like the Michelangelo, or not Michelangelo, the the David thing where he's anatomically correct, and you've seen it in a lot of um, you've seen it in a lot of places. Just Google like anatomic David picture. It's the naked man. He has his arms out to the side, palms facing out. It, we went from standing up straight, chin back, shoulders down and back, looking people in the eye to looking down at our screen or hunched over at our desk. We are rolled forward in our shoulders. We are seated for longer periods of time, which is closing off our hips, which is tightening up our hips, which is then bothering and irritating the lower back because our glutes are tight and our hamstrings are tight. And then that's bothering our knees and we, our IT bands are tight and everything makes sense. Everything is correlated. So by engaging your back, even something as simple as getting hopping on Amazon and grabbing bands with two handles on the top, 
pull, uh, kneeling down, throwing those bands over something that's going to not pop back at you. Make sure it's stable and pulling down shoulders down and back, pulling your elbows down towards your side and really feeling that squeeze in your back, in your upper back. It is going to change your posture. If you are doing that in any type of, in any type of consistency, uh, meaning anytime you're in the gym, anytime you're at home, you come home, maybe it's the middle of the day, you have had all these Zooms and you just need to take a little break. You know that your your neck is starting to hurt, your upper back, you're like so uncomfortable. This is, this is what is going to really help you to, this is really going to help you have that great posture that looks confident. It looks clean. It looks clear. And you're looking at things like like your traps. The traps are behind your neck. They go down. So you've got your traps. You've got, we don't have to go into like the lats and all these things, but all I'm saying is that increasing the amount of effort and energy you put into not heavy, not even heavy weights, but just warming up your back. So doing some low rows, high rows on the TRX next time you're around one is going to change everything because what's happening is the reason our backs are hurting so much, our necks are hurting so much, our our hips are hurting so much is when we're sitting and when we're texting and we're hunched over, we, I'm doing it right now, even as I podcast and I'm sh- holding my shoulders back to remind myself what's happening. And I learned this through Jake. It's really, thank you for explaining this to me. It's truly like a gift that you've explained it to me so well, but our bodies forget to use and, and forget how to find those small postural muscles in your upper back. It's like we forget where they are and we forget how to use them. So these things like our um, I mean, honestly, the muscles around your spine, so important, but the, the rhomboids and the traps, you Google it, but they're the muscles in your back that you wouldn't necessarily think they're like the muscles that are underneath your shoulder blades. So if you can see like the winging of your shoulder blades, it's the muscles underneath there that are so underutilized that we forget how to trigger them. So by triggering them with the low rows, with the high rows, with the TRX and the lat pull downs, that is going to create more familiarity for you to access them during your workouts, during your deadlifts, during your squats, and just when you're seated in a day-to-day position. I cannot emphasize this enough. So one of my favorite supersets, I know it's a total tangent from supersets, but one of my favorite supersets to do is doing something like a barbell low row. My palms will be facing out and I'll really just drive the elbows up and squeeze and hold. I love that so, so much. So I'll do that and maybe I'll do a shoulder workout. Um, Maybe I'll do some lateral raises, some overhead presses. Um, Maybe I'll do some biceps in there, but something that works the front of the muscles in a way. So you're working the back and you're working the front a little bit. But so often I see guys that are just have shit posture. Sorry to call anyone out, but they have shit posture. And I'm like, have you ever done a back exercise? They're like, nope, chest only, chest only. And I get it. Doing your chest, it's it's a great, like big, sexy muscle. You want to have these developed pecs but you got to even it out. There is uh, there is nothing sexier than a strong back or just something that's just a, a even body. You know, if you're working the chest out too much, then you're going to have a shoulder issue. Everything's going to get tight and rolled over. So we want to make sure that we're evening things out, right? So important to incorporate back exercises into your daily routine. But the reason why I love supersetting so much is because I just like to move. There's something about it that pumps me up, not just not just the actual pump like hypertrophy, but there's something about it that I really, really love. Now, there are days where I go in and I'll do one move at a time, three rounds, 10 reps, four rounds, 10 reps, or eight reps, whatever it is, and I'll go heavier and I will take longer rests in between those movements, but I would say 60% of my workouts that I do resistance workouts are super setting because I find it to be more effective for me and my body style. And I, sw- I sweat a ton. I still feel extra fatigued. Um, but that's not to say that I'm not also getting extra days where I'm lifting 
I'm trying to lift as much as my body weight in squats, definitely in deadlifts, making sure I have good form. And overall to me, doing that coupled with lots of walking, sauning, stretching. Oh my God. We did at baseline the other day. I went in, we were doing a a deep stretch uh, flexibility class and I was like, okay, they'll probably do some foam rolling. They'll do some, uh, I didn't even know what we were going to be doing. This guy, his name's Jermaine. He's in the Charleston local area. Follow Baseline on uh, Baseline Studios uh, to learn more about that. But we spent one hour doing hip opening stretches, frog poses. I it was I was sweating my I was sweating so hard. I forget my father listens to this. I was sweating like a banshee, like a, a, a mule. And um, heart rate wasn't up, but the stretch was so intense on the muscle and it really got into the deepest, darkest parts of your psoas, of your hips, of our lower back. Hamstrings are where I really struggle because I always sit curled up in a ball and I know it's a problem, but IT bands are super tight and that's the muscle basically connecting knee to hip and it goes longer, but that's, think of it there. Uh, and oh my God, this guy changed my freaking life. I was so sore after that class because though they were, it was tapping into muscles and like ripping and tearing and working these muscles that needed some attention. So all of that to say is please get a variety of workouts in. I love to do a little Pilates. If you're in Charleston, I like the longevity. It's yeah, it's, it's honestly fucking expensive to go and if you're listening to me from longevity and you want to throw me a free pass, then hey, I'll come in. I'll post all about it, even though I don't know what that will do. But longevity has been amazing. I love it. It's beautiful. It's aesthetic. It's chic. Maybe once or twice a month. I love baseline and golds for weights. Fit Life and Baseline does amazing personal training. There is high low for Pilates or I'm sorry for yoga and hit of course but yoga mostly um I did a yoga class at the works the other day it's fine it was so fast I couldn't really keep up and that was fine but I was like oh I kind of want a deep stretch class um but god there are just so many amazing spaces to get a variety in and if you're like hey I don't want to go to nine different studios then guess what you don't have to you can go to one go to gold's and then if you want to do a little yoga throw your headphones in and go to the side or the back of the room and do some yoga there there's plenty of spaces to do what you want to do if you want to do hey I want to do 20 minutes and that is it of weight training and then I want to incline walk that's that's what I love to do but I think that if I go on any longer then I'm going to tangent and people are going to tune out. If you want to work with me on nutrition programming, I do offer three month programs and I work with you individually. We go over your goals. We assess your nutritional needs. We go through your hormone cycle or your, your, sorry, your menstrual cycle. See what time of the month is best for X, Y, and Z workout. Typically I deal with um, mild weight loss and overall lowering inflammation in the diet, creating healthy habits that are sustainable. Uh, That's what I've been doing with several people this month. It's really exciting and I'm still loving it. If you're interested, no strings attached. If you want to schedule a consultation, go to elizagwellness.com and just book a 30 minute consultation. We can see if that program's even a good fit or if you want to just do a regular one-time consultation that works as well. Um, Okay. Well, fantastic. I can't believe that I'm getting this done. I wasn't going to do this until Wednesday evening, but I had some time clear up. So here we go. So happy, so happy. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you for listening and we'll talk to you next Thursday. Yeah.
Thank you.